people said that it would uh it would be bouncing all over the place look how smooth that is on ground now definitely just like cleats in dirt like this dirt here it's going to be a little rougher as you can see look at the tracks it's leaving and then definitely on the sidewalk it's going to be rough all right welcome back so we are back out here at the park this is my second time here today um, earlier we had a uh, we had some fire drills going on ooh, on the park when I powered this thing up the motor was backwards so I had to go back home flip the motor around and now we're back at the park um, there is a soccer player that's been walking back and forth kicking the ball so I think I'll head over to the other the other park uh, plus there's dogs in the corner so the other one is kind of short so I'm going to start the GPS now just so I don't forget and we'll see how this thing does and I noticed this grass is getting lumpier and lumpier and I don't know if it's from that sprinkler leaking or not we'll see how these tiny cleats do this one's got a really bumpy start on the beginning I also had to change the batteries in the controller this one is is pretty tiny I'm gonna shoot for this the runoff rather than in between the pole this gives me a, a lot more runoff right there and this one is pretty bumpy looks like they dug some sort of hole right in here so we'll see how this goes I'm gonna give it a quick little hit make sure everything's okay and here we go it got a little squirrely it looks like a wheel came off in that run and turned right really quick I have a feeling it probably stripped out the hex because cheap wheels tend to do that and the Mojave loves stripping out that uh, the rear hexes especially on big drive yep uh, the washer looks like it's still in the rim and yes it stripped out the hex so this wheel is no good now which kind of sucks you see the wheel hex is all rounded out so what happens is it strips it and then it unscrews it and that's usually high bite um, high bite uh, surfaces and with the cleats I must say is high bite so we're gonna have to figure out something else with this wheel which sucks because it's a rear and it's one I did a lot of work to but time for some rims I guess I know it's not gonna be fast because I was barely not even I didn't even get to half trigger stop read yeah 45 miles an hour stripped out the hex I was really hopeful for today, but with uh, the big castle system in it, it uh, 
definitely pulling a lot harder. I can't even tell if the washer is in there. I think that's the washer. Hopefully I didn't lose the washer. But I know the nut's gone. I'm gonna let the fans run to try to drain those batteries down. And then these were used rims. Um, and it's not a good quality rim. Even though it's from Proline, it's uh, it's soft. So let me get this thing back to the car. I'm gonna have to carry it, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so got everything back, got everything off. Head down to the hobby store and see if uh, we can find some wheels. Be right back. All right, back on the bench. I've spent the last few hours running from hobby store to hobby store. Now, had a couple of fails today with the Mojave. Um, you guys saw everything I did in the last video. I hooked Castle Link up. We calibrated the motor. I finished everything up. Put it together. And I had mentioned in there, uh, I should probably check motor direction. Well, I figured the ESC was already set up. There was already a motor in there. Um, it should go the right direction. Now, you do have to line up A, B, and C. And what I've noticed between Spectrum and Castle is Castle starts with A, B, C. This starts with C, B, A. Shouldn't really matter because regardless, they're in order. But as you see, I have one wire that's crossed over. So A was on A, C was on B, and B was on C. So I ended up having to switch two wires to get the motor direction correct on this system. Well, once you go censored, you can't switch the wires. Um, it'll smoke some stuff, so you can't do that. I should have caught it. I didn't. I didn't test it before I left. Turned out I had 100% in reverse, full throttle in reverse, and I had 50% forward, and then my brakes were backwards. So I got out there, couldn't run it. Get back to the house, open up the receiver box again, hook to it with the castle link, switch the motor rotation, and yes, I did try switching the motor rotation in the controller, but when you do that, you end up with the brakes being reversed. So you have to tap forward twice <laughs> to uh, get it to move. Then it's only 50% because you're moving into reverse. Then when you hit your brakes, it goes 100% into reverse right away because there's no brakes there. And then when you go to tap full trigger from reverse, it applies the brakes. So you have to switch it in the castle link, and I've showed this before. Well, with all that said, got home, switched the motor rotation, put my controller back to uh, normal, went back out. Then the soccer field that I was going to run at, the longest soccer field, there was a guy walking back and forth on his cell phone just kicking a soccer ball. I think he was just trying to exercise. Um, so I ended up going to the other field. Well, it turned out the other field, I don't know if they dug a big hole to fix something, but it's all tore up. Well, regardless of that, I was going to make a run anyway. And as you see in the footage, we had a wheel come off. The hex, this hex has rounded out. And this has always been a common problem with the rear of the Mojave. It's normally the left rear that strips out. Um, but because I've uh, tightened up the, or I locked the center diff, because it's got a spool in it, and then I tightened up front and rear diffs, especially with these cleats, we're getting a lot of traction. Traction on a cheap rim like this, even though they're Proline, the plastic, like I've said before, this plastic is very soft. Soft plastic results in to the hexes stripping. So, I'd love to say, you know, my cleats failed, um, but the rim failed. 
Now, how, how can we solve that? We can go to an aluminum rim. Um, it's going to be very costly. Put some spikes on that. And then I don't think the hexes will strip anymore. We might start busting some axles. But I don't know. We're having pretty good slippage with this. And I have soft start set up. Um, haven't adjusted torque limiting yet, which I might have to do. But I feel these were used rims anyway. Not only used rims, I had to boil them um, for 15 minutes each. One of them got boiled for an hour um, to get the tires off of it, which I showed. And that also could have contributed to uh, softening up uh, the plastic. Um, I don't think it did, but you never know. I did, uh, I did let it cool down normally, which means room temp. I didn't stick them in the refrigerator to cool them down because then it would change the molecular structure of the plastic because it's kind of like forging with plastic. Now, I'm hoping that the brass washer is still in here. Um, I don't mind losing the hex, but losing these brass washers, they're hard to come by. So, we'll see. But... Then I went to uh, a Bulldog uh, RC because it's close to my house. They didn't have one set of rims there. Everything was pre-mounted. Uh, which sucks because I'd rather not buy pre-mounted wheels that I have to then boil and unglue and then possibly ruin the foam and ruin the tire just to get the rims off of it. So with all that said, we're back home. I had uh, I couldn't go to Big Five because I bought all Big Five's uh, cleats, and I don't have enough cleats to do another set of rams. Now, if I were to break these down, I've ground these nuts down, and no big deal, but it would be a lot of work to get them to fit back onto another wheel, especially if the wheel's thicker, they might not fit. So, I had to buy more cleats. And the problem with that is, is it seems most of the big fives around me had a, had a, I guess a sale on cleats to where they were getting rid of a brand and getting a new brand. And so the cleats were really, really cheap. Well, I couldn't do that anymore. So I got stuck going to uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Now, Dick's only offers these. These are studded with plastic around the outside for the short ones. They didn't have any long ones there. I prefer this where the stud is encapsulated into it down at the base. And th this is all plastic. These are a little heavier, but I worry about the plastic breaking off and then me being left with a, a metal stud like this. But that's all they had. And most of the pa I bought everything they had. And most of the packages they had were opened as well. So hopefully there's 14 in each. We're going to do up an another set. And not only that... Um, these were a lot more money. Um, they were like $12.99 for $14. So I bought the four packages they had. I'm assuming with the four packages plus the $14 I have extra plus what I have left over on these. Hopefully I can get another set of rims done. Now granted these have only got 10 on each. But remember we're trying to go bigger. So bigger in circumference means I'm gonna to have to add more studs evenly spaced out which leads me to the only thing I could find the pro line which of course everybody has these buggy wheels that are unmounted these are a common common wheel these are the same size as these and because they don't have the spokes in here and they're solid it's very hard to line up if you notice each one of these is lined up with a stud so it was very easy to evenly space this. This I'm going to have to mark it, which is no big deal. I can go off this. 
I can literally draw this pattern onto this wheel and then go that route. Uh, but since I have them mounted up and they're balanced out pretty good and they're going to be 10 on each as well, I can replicate that. That's why I bought this. $24. I found these Traxxas wheels. I don't know if these are going to work. These were the largest rims that they had. <clears throat> mounted or unmounted that was somewhat flat. Now these are not somewhat flat. Even though they look, and this is something I've been telling you, is that what I'm going for, I did look at a bunch of rims that people have been sending me. Um, can't find most of them in stock anywhere. It's, uh, it's pretty much order and then wait. And these are double wide. So these are a lot wider than what I have, which I'm not happy about that, because if you know a wider wheel on grass, because grass is uneven, it could possibly make the RC not run straight. But we're going to give these a shot if they fit. I have a feeling that they're going to hit the shocks. Well, and they have the Traxxas deal, which means I got to shave them out to even test fit them. But they, uh, they might clear. So I'm going to have to ground out, ground down a set of these. And as you see the lip on each edge, I can't, I can't grind. This is what I was talking about. This is a good rim because your tire would sit into here and then you would glue this area right in here. And then when it tries to stretch it, the rubber is pushing against this plastic rather than a flat surface like on this. When the glue is pulling on a flat surface, these don't tend to come unglued a lot. These rims with a rubber tire do not tend to come unglued because they're capturing the rubber. So you can glue the rubber on both sides, top and bottom and the back. Now the tire can still rip, but the bead cannot pull off and it's not re re relying on the glue. So I'm going to build up a set of these. Uh, I wish I had the taller cleats, but I'm going to end up leaving these lips here. But part number for these rims are 5372X. Um, I don't even know what they belong on, but they are a taller wheel. They are almost the same size as my wheel with cleats on it. So these are a little bit bigger. The rim actually fits inside this rim. So that's going to give us more speed by running these. So hopefully that's going to work. Now I am going to have to trim out the Traxxas thing. Um, and then this plastic from Traxxas is a lot stronger and because we have the five holes here it's easier to space out now these were only twelve dollars for two twenty four dollars for four versus twenty three twenty four dollars for four of these as well so regardless the cost is going to be the same i feel the traxxas wheel we're going to have better luck with it only thing i worry about is the width and the, being wider and being taller, I'm going to end up using more cleats on this to make it run smooth. So I'm going to be up all night um, putting together another set, which it is what it is. But I was very disappointed in the run um, because I barely started to lay into the trigger. It, everything was going good and then all of a sudden it started veering right. Uh, really hard and I was staying in it uh, But it was veering right really hard and then I just let off then I realized out of the corner of my eye I saw one of the wheels rolling away. I Wish I can say it failed because one of my cleats shot out, but that's not the case uh, Cleats are still holding in strong, but you never know So love keeping you guys up to date. I definitely want you guys to know everything that I'm doing and we're going to go from there. But I'm going to go ahead and start getting these things built.
Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? You think this wheel is going to work better than this wheel? We'll find out on the next video. Thanks for watching. Nope. Ooh, that's a bad crash.